After every mass shooting, sadly, it seems the answer is there is no answer, no way to stop the violence. Six years ago, Seth Doan traveled to one country that actually seems to have found a way. We decided it was worth a second look. It's said that when you lose your parents, you lose your past. When you lose your child, you lose your future. Carolyn Lawton flung herself on top of her daughter when a gunman started shooting. But it was not enough to save Sarah's life. She was 15. She just turned 15, yes. One American is among the injured in what is being described as the worst massacre this century. A lone gunman with a high-powered rifle. The shooting in a cafe in the Tasmanian town of Port Arthur happened 26 years ago, but telling the story decades later still makes Lawton shake. What's it like being in a mass shooting? It's beyond frightening. It's haunting. And for every bullet that's fired, that's a life gone. And bang, there's another life gone and bang, there's another life gone, and bang, and when is it going to be my turn? Lawton was shot. And this is actually me. This is um, you on the stretcher? This is me here. on the stretcher. And did not know for hours her daughter had died. This is what's left of that cafe where the gunmen started shooting. In the end, 35 people were killed, and it rocked Australia. It came just six weeks after a new prime minister had been elected. I thought to myself, if I don't use the authority of this newly acquired office to do something, the Australian people are entitled to think, well, this bloke's not up to much. As to the question of gun control laws, the... So then Prime Minister John Howard, a conservative politician and close friend of George W. Bush, pushed through sweeping gun control legislation just 12 days after the massacre. The hardest things to do in politics often involve taking away rights and privileges from your own supporters. The tough new laws banned the sale and importation of all automatic and semi-automatic rifles and shotguns, forced people to present a legitimate reason and wait 28 days to buy a firearm and perhaps most significantly, called for a massive mandatory gun buyback. Australia's government confiscated and destroyed nearly 700,000 firearms, reducing the number of gun-owning households by half. People used to say to me, you've, you've violated my human rights by taking away my gun. And I'd say, look, I, I understand that, but will you please understand the argument, the greatest human right of all, is to live a safe life without fear of random murder. Consider this, if we tally public mass shootings that have killed four or more people, in the United States there have been well over 100 since the Port Arthur tragedy. But in Australia there has been just one in the 26 years since their gun laws were passed. Plus, gun homicides have decreased by 60%. It is incontestable that Gun-related homicides have fallen quite significantly in Australia, incontestable. It's clutching at straws. John Howard just simply didn't like guns. Former Senator David Lionhelm left Howard's political party in protest over the strict gun laws. He insists they've had little effect. There could have been something done about keeping firearms out of the hands of people with a definite violent uh, potential, but instead all firearm owners were made to pay the price. I don't think there's any relationship between the availability of guns and the level of violence. And to critics who say, you can't say that these changes in gun deaths happen because of this legislation. Well, I can say that because all the surveys indicate it. The number of deaths from mass shootings, gun-related homicide has fallen, gun-related suicide has fallen. Isn't that evidence? or we expected to believe that that was all magically going to happen. Come on, man. This one's where I keep the pistols and the rifle ammunition and the rifle bolts. 
Lawyer and winemaker Greg Mellick showed us where he locks up his weapons. If the weapons are in here, their ammunition's in there. You have them locked separately? Yes. Locking up guns and ammunition in separate safes is another regulation, as are surprise inspections by police. Mellick had to part with some of his prized guns in the buyback. How many firearms do you still own? When you were going to ask me that question, I should have checked. I don't know. The answer, about two dozen. This is a Browning 9mm. Which he uses for sport, hunting and shooting pests on his vineyard. Basically from here down is Riesling. Melick sees gun ownership not as a right, but a privilege. I'd be very uncomfortable going back to the way it was before when anybody could go in and buy a firearm. Really? Why? Quite frankly, I find it surprising you as an American ask me a question like that. It's just bizarre the number of people get killed in the United States. And you have these ridiculous arguments, well, if people carry guns, they can defend themselves. But this is being said by a gun owner, you, someone who shoots for sport. Yeah. I have a genuine reason for using firearms. From Tasmania to Sydney to Where Carolyn Lawton's living room. The bullet went into my, into my scapula. You'll right. We kept asking if there were lessons for the U.S. in all of this. I'm loath to comment, but my question is, how is it going for you over there? But I can't answer that for you. My heart goes out to all of you over there in America. Life is so short. And all and every one of us is somebody's child. And when we see what's happening, your heart bleeds.